Dale. I wrap Stephen of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up. And we're not quite at the close of business today, but we are at 3.33 p.m. Basically on uh, today is Wednesday, the 7th of August, 2019. And the market's going to settle on the plus side in the majority of the stock indices, if not all of them. You're slipping back a little bit in the Russell, but the others came up. And look at the day's lows. You're not looking at misprints. You are down 540 points lower than this. Uh, this morning in the Dow, you were down almost, what is that, uh, 62 points lower in the NASDAQ, I can go on and on. It is summer. It is super volatile. You've got people trying to figure out for themselves, gee, are interest rates in America going to go to zero? I just read about this. Uh, PIMCO put out a study, and they're well-respected as can be. They're not saying it's going there. I'm not putting words in their mouth. They say, for the first time, they're starting to question, is that a possibility, and how would you handle portfolios if it goes? There's nothing wrong with thinking that because we have so many people cutting rates. I think it was today uh, India, if I'm correct, maybe it was Thailand, New Zealand. We got the Philippines on board for tomorrow. Australia probably going to cut rates at its next meeting. And, of course, the European Central Bank, what are they going to do? If you looked at industrial production today out of Germany, it came in a negative. 1.5%. The market was looking for it to be down four tenths. That's almost four times as much as the market thought. There's something going on. Obviously, we're looking at what's happening in U.S. rates, and they've really given back quite a bit of this move. If you look, take a look, the bond market, two points, two full points off the top. If you take a look at the notes, one full point off the top. These aren't small moves. Early on in the morning, you got down to about 163 in the 10-year. You, you, the auction happened today, also came in at 167, and you're probably a bit higher than that right now. As for other markets, well, in the energy market, still an ugly day, but you're almost $2 off the low. People pay attention. You get some of these markets that overextend one way or the other, and you've got to pay attention to it. Now, if you look at the weekly area chart of closes on the S&P at this point in time, you're down for the week about 1.78%, down 52 and a quarter points. So the market's got some bias to the downside. It's not uncommon that you whipsaw around that 18-week moving average on the first challenge of it. When you look at the action, you can see you had a big bounce yesterday with follow through today. That does not mean you've entered a bull market. It's a bounce off of an excessive low, a vertical price drop. If we take a look with the swing line, you can see you've still got lower highs, lower low. You can see that the market at the 200-day moving average of closes. Turn on financial TV. You'll hear about that average a lot, especially in stocks. In futures, not as much unless you go to longer-term charts because most people trade the front end of a futures contract, not the further back months. And when that occurs, all the volume's up front, and sometimes you don't get the more than really good volume for the 200 days worth of trading, a quarter or more. Think about it, 20 business days to a month, three months is 60 days. So that's a long period of time on there. In any case, as we take a look, you're getting a bounce. We mentioned maybe you can get back up towards that 100-day average if you stay over the lower Bollinger Band. And all that this market has done is it exceeded the lower band, went to a free fall, hit the 200-day, and you're getting a bounce. Now the resistance is between this Bollinger Band and the 100-day average to start with another level of resistance on the upside of 29.73. So far, the geniuses, quote unquote, that used the 200-day average and may have put on positions or covered short positions, I don't know what they did, uh, that number held for whatever reason. Same thing in the S&P and the same action. You're back over the upper Bollinger Band. Yesterday, you were fighting at that number. Today, you managed to crawl over it. And that's about all I can say with it. The 100-day average still resistance, and it is a market that is no longer in oversold territory. It's full of volatility. In the NASDAQ, duh, 200-day average, Got up yesterday to the Bollinger Band, just like the others. Today exceeded it a little. I won't back away from the 100-day and the 18 being resistance points. In the S&P, I'm sorry, the uh, Dow, 100-day average up, got up yesterday, 
came up fighting right here and you can see you're at the Bollinger Band just over it. Again, still resistance 18 and 100 and by the way, the 200 day is still a zone of potential support. The Russell was different. The Russell has been under this number, the, Bo the 200 day average and the Bollinger Band. So this is what I'd term a free fall and wherever it's gonna bounce, it'll bounce. Then the idea is to get back within the Bollinger Bands in short order and that's what the market did. Why? Because the way that algorithm is designed, 95% of the time the market will trade within the bands. That's period it. So it's back into the band, that's all that I can say. In the VIX, you have an outside day down was this the top is gonna to be the question the way that it was back here. So you get these brief bursts in the market and I realize when I say that I think that writing the put has been an easier task when it's down to 11, 12, whatever the number is than selling a call because you can always pop in the call more than you can pop to the downside or break to the downside in the put. If you sell at 12, it's typically not going under zero. You sell at, uh, for example, 14, is it going to 20, 30, 40? I don't know. There's always, I deal, I, I feel about it, more risk. Now, if you had this number and you're writing puts or calls when you're in the 20, 30 range, whole different world. In the bond market, quite a bit of action here to the upside. One, two, three, four. Were we up here on this market on this day? I think we were. We finished at uh, 157.22, so that was over. This day we closed 155.19 under the Bollinger Band. So one day up over it, two, three, four, and five. The odds are in favor that you don't go beyond five. Could it? Absolutely. Should it? Well, if you go back and you do your studies like I do, the market typically pulls back into the Bollinger Band by that fifth day. Is that a short? No, that's not what the market is saying. It is saying that extension may have run its course for the time being. Now, this is an overbought market that will need very little nudge for the red line to get back under 80 if you open lower tonight and start pulling back. That also probably brings it under that number. All I'm saying to you, is that the market has gone up rather in dramatic fashion. It can go higher if something goes wrong with the one. The fixings typically around 8.15 at night, central daylight time. I only started watching the one fixing this week. So do I know it's that way every time? I don't, but I started watching it because as they fix it right now, the market seems to be focused on it. Once the market gets away from it, I probably won't pay that much attention to it again, but I thought you'd like to know that. In the five-year note, a 10-year note, same thing, five days in a row up over, I think it's excessive. I would not be surprised that a lot of pros took money off the table if they didn't get out at the first challenge at a Bollinger Band, five days might have done it. Go on your chart, come how many times in a row you get six days in a row over or under a Bollinger Band. You're gonna count them on one hand. That's how often you're gonna see it. Uh, and, and I'm talking in any given year. I'm not saying you can't go back 30 years and find more. And by the way, do front futures months. Don't go to the back months. Take a look at this. Same thing with TLT. So I think it's a bit excessive. The market finished the day out at 140.03. It's about 50 points over the top band. Momentum seems to be rolling. Hasn't rolled, not past tense. Rolling to try to come down a little. Could a correction be in store? Why not? You've had a heck of a run in the market. In the dollar index, sort of stuck at the 18-day average of closes. You had a big vertical decline in the market, and it's just sort of sitting right here. I don't see it trending at this point. In the euro currency, a vertical rally in the market that is stalled out against the 18-day average. Remember, they're mirrors of each other at this point. When you come to the British pound, last trade I see is 121.64. To me, it's still very bearish in terms of Lower highs, lower lows in the embedded reading. Lose the embedded reading, I'll be looking for the 18-day average to be hit. Don't lose it, you've got the Bollinger Band potentially in play in the market. In the end, 
Notice how the upper Bollinger Band is containing this rally. You're now fighting at that a number of days in a row. You finish today at 94.42 under that number. 94.61 and a half is that number. Bitcoin, the upper Bollinger Band, stalling the market. Another vertical price rise that got overbought stalling out right now. That does not mean it's top. It has stalled out. I think those that caught this play have cashed in for a moment. They're looking to see what it's going to do next. In Brent versus WTI crude, the EIA number today came out mind-blowing big. I think the net build is something like 10 million barrels of everything. This market got smashed as it closed in on WTI crude. You can see the October Brent underneath Bollinger Bands just came apart. So it's just come in the past week and a half from roughly 65 down to near $55 a barrel. Our WTI, of course, should have been hit with that big build, and it did. It is oversold, first time under the Bollinger Band. Use some caution here. You might find that $50 mark is uh, an important zone in mind of some traders. Rebob still falling. We've talked about it. Your summer driving season for all purposes is finished, finite, done. You're at August 7th. You'll get some people going, but the kids go back to school in a large part of the country. Come early September at the latest, families are finishing up. You've got a pretty big supply of gasoline finishing the year. And in that gas, we didn't get that crazy hot summer and prices have been under terrible pressure. There's so much nat gas around that in Texas, they just had a ruling yesterday where some of the drillers are able to burn off the gasoline again into the uh, atmosphere rather than being forced to put it back into the pipelines. There's plenty of this product around. It is still overall in a bearish bias, but very oversold give you a pop for no reason at all. Something I want to start your pop off in the morning with are my videos. Now, not the videos you're getting here free on YouTube. I am talking my subscriber video where it's password, user ID protected. And the reason is I do it different than this one. I'm able to say buy here, sell there, stop here, objective there. And I, I do this for the, what I call the swing trader. The person that is looking for using the futures for that in and out, but certainly I'm not talking the day trader. That's a whole different way and something different entirely. So what I'm going to deal with in the morning is I'm going to bring you up to date on the fundamentals as I see them. I get up and I've read a lot by 5, 5.15 in the morning. I have my coffee. I start working right away and I'm able to put in this particular video all my entry, exit, stop points, where I'm wrong, where I'm right, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The idea is to give you confidence with a chart. My charts will look exactly this way. So they're different than what you see in these videos here. There's more studies on them, and I do much more with them. So there's a reason it's called a subscriber video. I will review the market in this exact sequence each and every time. So let's assume that you're somebody that wants the energies. What do you have to go through? Stock indices, metals, grains, if that's all you want. We put a slide bar on the bottom. As you grab it and slide it, it's going to light up and tell you which one of these sections you've entered. If that's too difficult, there'll be a lexicon on the side. Just hit the one you want. The idea is to put in one video all that I can, but let you choose the sections you want to go to, and away you go with that. I think it's pretty simple. What else? Well, to get to it, it's really another simple thing. We throw in with this our QT mobile platform. In other words, if you have an Android or an Apple phone, we give you a, a what we call our application. In the app, we use push notifications, not text which means you download the app, you put in your user ID once. Whenever I put out a new video or a written recommendation, if you take my full subscriptions, it tells you there's something there. Click, just click on that message. It's not a text, it's a push notification. When you click, it's going to open up the app. It's going to bring you right to that information you want, and it'll play. You're going to get charts. You're going to get quotes. The application by itself, by the way, I charge $40 a month for. It's free with any of my subscriptions. First 30 days, $7.95, equivalent of about 26 and a half cents a day. You can quit at any time you want, by the way. If you go into the next 30 days, it'll bill you $15. You can stop it if you don't want it, 
Or some people convert and they'll say, you know, I like this. What's it run for a year? 360 days is how we round it. It turns out to be $156. Now, if you think about that, it's a, a dollar and a half of a gold futures contract, three cents in the silver market, uh, three points in the S&P on the full ones. It's not very expensive. And that's the idea, building a base for you to work with. And of course, we do brokerage should you want to deal with us. How do you get to this? Go to our website. Under the word education or research, morning subscriber video, just click on it. Pull down menu will show you everything. It'll answer questions about how this works, and you can even sign up for it there. I'm I Rapstein. I hope to see you first thing in the morning. When I say first thing, remember, I'm recording right around 6 a.m. Central Daylight Time. I want this stuff to be out before the U.S. government reports come out. You can also click up here. It'll take you right to that page as well. You have a good day.